Now they just held a press conference moments ago saying the police are refusing to let any of the people zip tied have any food or water. But they say they walked 200 miles in the heat to get here. They're not going anywhere. And as you can hear, many cars are driving past honking, agreeing with the union. The Senate began debating this package around 2 this afternoon and just wrapped up moments ago. Now that bill will go to the governor's desk, who is obviously a little busy at the moment with protesters actually chained in front of his door, preforming a sit-in demanding a people and planet budget. Kathleen, that's right. I'm here at Aaron's Pavilion, where Go217 is set to begin in just about 30 minutes. Now I'm joined with Erica from St. John's Hospital. And tell me, what is this program about? Yeah, John, time is running out on this year's session with no real legislative wins to show so far. There will be no budget today, Sean. That's what Speaker Madigan is saying. Disappointing. That's what leaders are saying about the lack of a state budget. Obviously, I'm disappointed we don't have a budget. Uh, it's very frustrating. Uh, we did work hard all session trying to do that. Bitterly disappointed in what has happened these past three years the failure of the Democrats in the House and Senate, their failure to work with us. And on cue, the finger pointing began. The Republicans who we worked with, who we drafted their bills together with us, didn't vote for the bills. And so that's the disappointment. Speaker Madigan has absolutely no intention whatsoever of changing a single solitary thing in this state. The majority in the House knows darn well what's done, what needs to be done. They're not doing it. There's a concern. They just don't have a high level of confidence in how the government is conducting this. And the cost of this deliberate inaction? We're going to start to see some real pain now. We're going to start to see downgrades. We don't have any funding for schools. We don't have any funding for higher ed and a bunch of social programs. We don't have a budget. It did not take long for the credit agencies to get word of Illinois lawmakers in action. SNP downgrading the state's general obligation bonds and Moody's following suit. Illinois now just one step above junk bond status. Michelle Lindstrom, WAND News. Outrage over this Facebook post by Ward 8 Alderman Chris Thylan. Addressing the recent spike in gun violence. Reading, I almost wish we had a gang here because about 25 to 30 kids would quietly disappear. Now Springfield residents are calling for his resignation. The reason I think that the mayor should ask for his resignation is really to show the community, show our youth, that we're really serious about including them and that they are important and that we don't wish death on them or for them to become gangbangers or for increased violence on our streets. Lisa Hensley started the petition over the weekend and so far more than 160 people have signed. And then I woke up Saturday morning and I, I was kind of looking for a petition to sign myself noticed there wasn't one, decided to put one out there, and it took off with some success. But Thylan says his words were misunderstood, and he apologizes for any harm caused because of it. And he is committed to bringing the community together to address the issues affecting the area. But for Hensley, that's not enough. The community as a whole has to be greater than any hate or bad feelings or ill will that any one person might have for another. And uh, Alderman Chris Thylan's speech just does everything to tear that down and nothing to make that happen. In Springfield, Michelle Lindstrom, WAND News. Rocking out in solidarity. Just call people's attention to it and that it's, uh, it's all about fairness. CU stands with Standing Rock held an all-day concert to call attention to the pipeline crisis in North Dakota. This is a huge water issue and um, not only is it just water, but it's what's happening to indigenous people. This has been going on for, uh, you know, for quite a long time and with the Native American uh, issue there in North Dakota. Raising money to help the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe bring an end to the construction of the pipeline. A pipeline is going to break. It's going to break. There's no doubt about it. And um, it's coming to Illinois. It's going to cross the Missouri, the Des Moines, the Mississippi, the Illinois, the Kaskaskia. A project that could cause health hazards across the nation, including right here in Illinois. What are we supposed to drink? And it's coming to Illinois. It's not, Illinois is not safe from this thing. So people think it's just North Dakota. It's not true. It's all our water. Standing up with the tribe to do what they believe is right. Human dignity, it's uh, social justice, it's uh, um, a sovereign nation, it's um, indigenous 
peoples that you know these pipeline companies don't care about. It's um, our water, just like it's their water, and you know you pollute water somewhere and you pollute it everywhere. Surely, regardless of where you are, your health matters. They don't stop it up there. It's going to come to Illinois. In Urbana, Sean Lindstrom, WNDZ News. The Central Illinois Food Bank provided 24,000 pounds of food to those in need today, seeing around 1,000 residents at their final healthy food distribution of the year. A gift of food just in time for the holidays. The Illinois Department of Ag came through huge with us to be able to give people some healthy foods right before the holidays. Uh, this time of year, folks are especially uh, needing extra food for uh, Christmas, for holidays. And so this is just a way for us to, uh, to give back. Central Illinois Food Bank held their final mobile food pantry of the year in Springfield. The healthy food distribution is something that we like to do not just during this time of year, but 365 days a year. We like to be able to get people not just food, but healthy foods. They're grateful all year round. Uh, folks have a, a need for food. Uh, obviously, we can't survive without it, so they're always been very grateful. Providing a vital need to a population that may not have access. Over 70% of people that access pantries actually have a health ailment, like hypertension, diabetes, high blood pressure, so they need these healthy foods to be able to help with those conditions. Something that isn't possible without the help of volunteers. My wife and I have been very fortunate, and we just want to give back, and it's a, the food bank's a great way to uh, give back including Governor Rauner himself, who was there briefly to help out. He's not just going to come and shake hands. We're actually putting him to work. He's going to be handing out some oranges with the Lieutenant Governor. Also, Raymond Poe, the Director of the Department of Ag, is going to be here as well. And the Central Illinois Food Bank is not sure when the next mobile food pantry will be held, but they're hoping to hold one in the near future. Michelle Lindstrom, WAND News.